people who know murderers, were there any signs that something was off? If so, what were they? Just out of high school, I spent eight months in Australia. Met a family that I became really close to. We hung out a lot and I worked for him. I liked the wife and kids more than the husband. He was very narcissistic and far too interested in his 13-year-old daughter's friends. He got caught cheating on his wife for the second or third time and, when the marriage was falling apart, described to his soon-to-be ex-wife how he could kill her and make it look like an accident. A couple of years later he remarried and got caught cheating by his new wife. She wasn't as forgiving as the first wife and threatened divorce before she died exactly as he had described how he would kill his ex. She, the ex-wife, called the police and they re-examined the accident and found the chunk of wood he hit her with before he loaded her in the car and pushed it over a cliff. Serving life in prison at it. He died of cancer in prison in 2017. I had a friend who married a guy who treated her like ass. She told me two things that I believed wholeheartedly, that if anyone ever hurt her kids, she would kill them and that someday she would kill her husband. Well, guess who she caught abusing their youngest? He was allowed visitation with the children and he had connections so the child abuse allegations were dismissed. Guess who was shot and killed? I would trust that woman with my life, I know that sounds weird, but she is one of the best people I've ever met. A former co-worker tried to murder his girlfriend and spent some time in prison for attempted murder. Got out, moved to Florida, and promptly murdered his new girlfriend. Dude was red flags up and down. Needlessly aggressive over small matters, insanely prideful, and willing to argue about basically any disagreement. None of the women I worked with were comfortable around him, and some straight up called him dangerous and wouldn't be in the same room as him. We worked an office job and he actually thumped his chest at me with his fists yelling about seniority. He ate some of the first girlfriend's face while stabbing her in the chest multiple times. She tried to get him to be kept in prison and to warn his new girlfriend, but he dismissed her as crazy and blowing things out of proportion. He cut the second girlfriend's throat because he thought she danced with someone else. For four years I worked four desks away from someone who was arrested and convicted of a 32-year-old cold case murder. Dude was an asshole but didn't give off murder vibes. The general reaction was, huh, I hope his replacement is less of a dick. One of my former co-workers decided to shoot a house all because a dog was barking in the backyard of a different house, went on a shooting spree killing the entire family except for the infant that was on the second floor. Only thing that was off was his drinking problem. My dad would always tell me about the crazy things his work friend would say. Things like how he was going to push his wife down the stairs or put rat poison in her food. I told my dad that these weren't normal things to say and he should contact the police or at least his HR, but he would defend it by saying that was just his sense of humor. He got arrested trying to hire a hitman to kill his wife which ended up being a cop. It's a safe bet that at least 90% of advertised hitmen are undercover cops. A real hitman who doesn't want to get caught wouldn't advertise himself over the internet. Serious question, but how do hitmen advertise themselves to get business? I've always wondered. I don't think it's one of those things where it's advertised lol. If you know a hitman then you are probably already in some shady business yourself. In the third world country where I'm from, if you live in a rough area, dudes would just casually talk to you and ask if you had troubles with anyone, they could make them go away for a price. Just like offering you know, home reno services or whatever. One of my uncles murdered his wife. He was out of jail by the time I was a kid. Yes, there was always something off about him. My mother told me he was always violent and had a sadistic streak, he liked to make people afraid. He mellowed out as he got older but he was always a user and always looking to take advantage where he could. I'm pretty sure he was a sociopath. My mother had a lot of siblings and he was the only one like this. I worked for a guy that went to kick the guy's ass that was molesting his daughter. The molester pulled a gun and in the fight, my old boss killed him with his own gun. My boss served six years in Louisiana Penitentiary. Last I saw him he had full custody of his daughter. 
My former manager killed his wife and attempted to make it look like a suicide. He did this because he was ultra-religious and cheating on his wife with multiple women he found online. The church he was a member of frowned upon divorce, so he thought murder would be a better alternative. The story has been on the Dateline and other shows. He was a super strange dude, and when I found out I wasn't completely surprised. His office always smelled like farts. My ex-husband and I were together nine years and had three children together. He had his flaws, as everyone does, and there were a few things, like lying, that were an issue in the beginning. But he was a supportive husband and father and a great employee at a veterinary hospital for seven years. Clients and animals loved him. When our daughter, youngest child, was a few months old, he started having an affair with a co-worker of his. Ultimately, it ended our marriage. She had two kids from her previous marriage who were very close in age to two of mine. Eventually, my ex and this person got married and had two daughters of their own. Four years ago he murdered all five of them, the new wife and the four kids. Literally no one in his life could have said they saw anything indicating he would ever do something like that. I know a guy who killed someone with a sword. A replica katana, but an actual sword. He'd always been weird and maladjusted but never in a way that made anyone nervous that way. I spent a lot of time at a friend's house when I was six to nine years old. He had a brother who was like three years older than us, who I remember as being generally nice, but I have one weird memory of him absolutely losing his shit when he tried to teach me and his brother to rollerblade and I couldn't get it, like throwing things and weeping uncontrollably. When I was in high school, found out that he had joined the military, and while he was deployed he got court-martialed for killing civilians and keeping body parts, fingers, ears, as trophies. Had a law professor who was a flippin' genius. Harvard slash Yale combo. Loved the guy, his exam involved Hulk Hogan and the NWO doing a hostile takeover. He used to make fun of me for smoking, at the time, Marlboro Lights, real lawyers smoke reds. A few years after I graduated, he shot and killed his autistic kid and then shot and killed himself in a police standoff. Still makes no sense. Two theories, caregiver burnout or the apple fell too far from the tree, shame. Caregiver burnout is real and horrible to deal with especially when you're facing the rest of your life being a way you don't want, and we have little to no resources for people in forever caregiver situations so it can feel hopeless for some people, especially if you have a severely disabled child that will one day face life without you and you're afraid of what that will be like for them. Also could be the pride, if this guy was the genius you say he is it could have bothered him that his son didn't measure up and held back his image. Some of the best people put on a charismatic display for the people in their lives but are deeply concerned about how they are seen, stuff like having a disabled kid can drive them crazy because they think it reflects poorly on them. Just my theories.